I'm going to talk to you about something that you will actually not experience, uh, uh, charging. With um, all these uh, great improvements in range, thank you, all the great improvements in range and battery capacity that, that we see, obviously charging becomes uh, a bigger job to do. And our customers uh, ask us as a manufacturer to give them solutions that cater to their specific use case. So what we do know from uh, research and of course talking to our uh, customers is that actually most of the customers have the possibility to park their car at the designated space either at home or at work. And actually as of today, not just for BMW, the majority of charging events takes place in private charging circumstances. So either at home or uh, at work. That means that charging doesn't always have to be fast. We just uh, looked at the uh, peak performance, and I will talk about it in a little bit in the context of high-performance DC charging. Uh, but it means that the car can actually relatively relaxed recharge while the customers and the car are sleeping, either <laughs> uh, overnight or hopefully not in the office or during, during work hours. So we are in the business of addressing the customer concerns about how do I charge, where do I charge, what does it cost, and uh, how long uh, does it take. Most of it happens at home. 20% as of today are just public charging uh, events. And out of those, about 20%, so 4 or 5% overall only today are high performance charging uh, events. This is typically, statistically speaking, and our statistics always lie, but just to give you an idea, four times a year, the customers are driving ranges on a daily trip that exceed the range of the battery. And only when I drive further than the battery range lasts do I need to recharge quickly, right? When the car rests, parks, when you go shopping, gym, uh, uh, whatever, there's no need to put a lot of performance, charging performance in the, in the battery. It's not good for the battery and it's not necessary for the customer. So I think this gives you a good picture of why we are focusing our charging, BMW charging efforts on home and, and, and workplace charging. And I would like to move you uh, to my charging wall with me to uh, show you uh, what we, what we uh, uh, have in stock for, for the customers. This here is what we call the flexible fast charger. This is the standard configuration it comes in. It's a function box with an adapter. Um, in the US, 110 volts, Canada, 220, right? No, 110. 110? Okay, so you get basically just a trickle charge out of an average home at 1.2 kilowatts or something. Uh, 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 a charging performance, ch charging a 70, 80 kilowatt battery takes days. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's not cool, but it's something that does work in case of an emergency. And exactly how long it actually takes? So let's say from zero to 100, how long will it take it to fully? You, you take the battery capacity divided by 1.1. So 80, uh, good math, 73 hours, three days, yeah. But, but guys, no one arrives home with 0% charge. I mean, our people, our, our customers are, are brave, but not, not as brave. But it's flexible because it has this adapter piece. And uh, in the US spec, we deliver it with a NEMA 1450 plug, so a, a 32 amp uh, plug, plug that can easily be uh, installed. And many of our customers, as I said, have garages, and many of those, of course, some of you maybe have dryer plugs or, or uh, electric power tool plugs already in their, in their garages. This now is a configuration that provides 11K, and 11K is charging overnight, right? And the customers are happy with that, especially, don't forget, when you drive extensively and experience the cars, but customers on average, they commute uh, from Monday to Friday, 30 to 40 miles an hour, so they have an uptake of 13 or 14 kilowatts from the battery, not more, right? So the charging is done with this configuration in an hour and change. It's, it, it's good stuff, it's standard, it needs to be installed. We have service providers for that because that's also something customers ask, how do I get it to the wall if I don't have a power, high power plug yet? Optionally, uh, customers can upgrade to a, to a wall box. It's uh, basically the same story, as I said 11K, but in the US one phase market it's 9.6, but really that's just change in charging performance. Um, same idea, same performance, 9.6, uh, a bit more premium, uh, a bit better cable handling, a, gar a garage for the, for the plug, and, and the branded solution, and many customers, of course, like the interaction with you know, the brand, uh, not just the car when they're done uh, driving. So this is basically our home. This one is portable, so like if I'm going somewhere and I know yes. there's gonna be- Yes, yes, we mounted it to the wall here. You can put it in the, in the trunk, but usually when you go 
mobile and you have highway recharging needs, you have DC charging and you have uh, installed yeah, cable. Yeah, if I drive from my house to the racetrack for the weekend and I want to camp, they have Our city and outlets, and then I can plug it in there. And, and we even have a camping uh, plug as well uh, at 3.7K, so a bit uh, improved. So we, we, we cater with these adapters to every, we think, to, to, really, to every use case. All around the world, all, all the plugs, I think we have 22 adapters in stock or something. <laughs> Yes, okay. that, well that actually has in theory a maximum capacity of 22, okay. but uh, the charging trifecta is infrastructure performance, charging equipment performance and vehicle performance, so the shortest one wins in this case, 11K is currently our limit. Is the wall box integrated with the MyBMW app? The wall box uh, can be controlled with the MyBMW app, and it's a great question because that leads us back to uh, public charging if you, if you want. Um, we, we have, um, uh, basically the BMW app as the digital bracket for customers to interact with the entire vehicle and this will be the next sequence of presentations but when it comes specifically to charging, controlling charging uh, processes, uh, beginning, stopping, seeing charging history, finding charging stations are all benefits that are included in the head unit and in the BMW app. So because, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, because that's actually, it, it, you know, interact, customers that interact with the vehicle and with the app are of course customers that interact with the brand and it does increase the convenience. And you know, while we are still basically here in the home charging display, when, when customers convert to, to BEV, and, and all of our customers, statistically speaking, convert, right? For the next couple of years, six, seven years, statistically speaking, every customer will be for the first time in a BEV. And so they say, where do, I, where do I recharge? I don't see a charging station. I see gas stations, I don't see charging stations but once they experience that they never have to worry about charging because they leave home every day with a full charge every day and they don't need a full charge during the day, they say, how could I ever bother going to a gas station? Why? You know, it, it's, it's time inefficient. And so our conviction, and I'm head, head of BMW charging, so you wouldn't be surprised to hear that from me, but our conviction is charging is much better than fueling. From a strategic perspective, it, it might not be the right venue to do after it, but we can talk about this later. It's up to you. Um, if you have the my BMW app, do you have any plans to integrate that with multiple charging access? So my biggest issue right now is I have three, four different, you know, spots, cars, apps, so I can charge the different charging stations. Yeah, EA yeah, yeah, and, 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 and yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, my phone, is it, is it plug and charge? Not yet. 15, 11, 8. Yeah, we, no, we don't have 15, 11, 8 uh, at, the, at this stage. Are there strategic plans? Ideally, you know, again, we have uh, electromobility providers in every market, a different player. Ideally, our target is, of course, to have the customer go to our app and control everything there, but that battle is still you know, uh, out for discussion. In the US, we have a couple of major uh, infrastructure players, and they currently drive customers to their, to their own apps. So we, go, we go, at least we go from cards to app increasingly. In the US, we, you have an, an, an app-controlled uh, environment. Is, is plug and charge on the roadmap for a software update in the future? I couldn't talk about that right now at the IX launch because it's not there yet, but we, we see the competition and we see what the technology is developing. For, for us, really, the focus is from a customer perspective, and this is what I'm, I'm representing here from a customer perspective to, to convince them, and, and I think we have good substance to do that. It's not a problem, it's not costly, it's super convenient. And you know, all these fears about long time charging are actually evaporated because it, Yes, it takes 10 hours to recharge the car from, from not to, to everything overnight, but I'm sleeping anyway. And this is the great advantage. Charging, and again, you guys know that because you're you know, in the know, but, but charging happens while you do something else. And fueling, you have to hold the nozzle, right? And, that, and that's an advantage that you know, it sounds trivial to you, but it's something that we need to convey and we need to back up with, with convincing solutions. I, but I, I want to, before you challenge me on it, I would like to, to go and look at long distance um, uh, uh, travel because that's of course something customers do expect. They buy a premium product. They don't want to uh, experience any kind of uh, compromise in terms of, of usability. So you, maybe not you, you, but your peers now these days, uh, they don't talk a lot about uh, range anxiety anymore. They talk about char charge anxiety. And I read a lot of uh, uh, reports, obviously I care about them too, how their journalists drive all across Europe and then give their findings about charging POI quality and uh, charging times and charging performance and charging cost and so on. But just to, to that extent this overly, uh, uh, we, we have taken one exemplary long, very long distance trip from, from Berlin to, to Paris, 1,030K, 650 miles or something like that. 
it's an extreme trip. Most customers don't cover these distances. Most customers don't cover these distances with, the, with the car. I just talked to a Canadian colleague over there. He said, no one would ever do that. You fly, right? But just to showcase you know, the performance and, and the convenience of charging in, in this example. So the customer leaves the home. They are encouraged to charge at a state of battery, uh, state of charging the battery of less than 10% because you could see before this is when the, when the power of the, of the charging performance kicks up. They get a recommendation where to charge. There are actually 10 high-performance charging stations on this particular route. They see a range circle. We'll talk about it later when we talk about the digital reality that we create for customers. They get a recommendation, a recommendation to recharge at a good start uh, state of charge for the battery. And of course, uh, with predictable planning, also at a spot that is not highly uh, in demand, so there's no waiting times. Uh, the same thing happens another about 400 kilometers later, and so they make it on two point something charges uh, to Paris. Uh, these charges, you could see it before, take about 30 minutes from 10 to, to 80 percent. You know, charging more than 80 percent is, is not beneficial for, for the battery, but it's also not beneficial for the customer. Most of our customers need to take a break every two or three hours. Why do I need a full range of, uh, in the vehicle if I, my range doesn't last that long, right? So I think it, it matches pretty well with the battery sizes that we have. And so if you look at it overall, you save in, in Europe, in the US, in China, and many of the uh, major markets, you save 10 to 50% on energy, and you lose about, in this example, a trip just for the refueling, recharging comparison, about 20 minutes. So I think it's a very con convincing case also for the everyday uh, usability as well as for the for the long distance uh, uh, utility of our battery electric vehicles together with our BMW charging offering. 